Welcome into the Inside LAFC MVP podcast. Joining you from glorious Eastern Los Angeles. This has become a hot topic. <laughs> we love the feedback. And I will say this honestly, I'm not being flippant or anything. City zoning, I'm fascinated by. So when we said East Los Angeles, which is incorrect as well, just like Alhambra is incorrect because it lies over there. We're going to go with Eastern Los Angeles, but we do something different every week because some of the folks to, gave us a, yeah. a background on everything. I think for all the people listening that are in Los Angeles, they get it. They they get the the delineations and how different neighborhoods, like it's you need to be so specific. If you're not from Los Angeles and you listen to us every week, you're probably like, what? It's all the same, right? No, man. So we're giving you just a little lesson on when you come here. Don't lump it all in together. It's a big sprawl. There's a lot of different neighborhoods and even sub-neighborhoods within those neighborhoods. Just, you know, ask somebody. It's a great, that's a great idea. Cause we don't, you know what? We do know we have a lot of people who join us from outside of Los Angeles and we appreciate you doing that. Uh, when you come to LA, make sure you see as much as you can, uh, rent a car, uh, use our Metro system. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's cheap. It's inexpensive. Obviously it'll get you from point A to point B. Uh, Max and Vince here together on the podcast. And, uh, it's a busy week again here for LAFC. We, uh, we look ahead, obviously, to a game on Wednesday. We'll talk about that here at the League's Cup, and then they will be back on the road at Real Salt Lake. Before we move forward... Or... For the first time, how did we make it all the way to August and we're just finally now? I don't even know. I, July was... Because I had that trip in June, mm -hmm. and it felt not that long ago, and July went like this. And right. I'm sure we, I say that every year. Everyone says that, but it really felt very quickly. Well, it's weird because we'll play Real Salt Lake next weekend, and then a month later we'll play them again. We'll get that out of the way. Yet yeah, we play Portland early on in the season, then won't play them until almost the last game. Second of the to last? Second to last game of the season. Good road trip. Certainly market calendars for that, and it'll be here sooner than you could imagine. One of the things we've been following about LAFC is how uh, different guys step up, and we'll talk about that here in a moment. With that said, our guest this week is Mahala Opoku, who did that in a big way. We've spoken to Mahala before, and Vince, I'm looking forward to speaking to him because it is he's soaking it all in. This is a kid. Uh, Charles Barham had a... Uh, had a list of the best under 22s over the weekend. Mahala, obviously, with a game like that, made the list. But we are here along the ride with these young players, and it's uh, it's very fulfilling because we were here from the beginning. Now we get to see them grow, and this guy's seizing it, taking the bull by the horns. Yeah, Mahala's always been super talented, and obviously he he blasts onto the scene with that goal against Cruz Azul. Raw, raw talented. Raw, raw talent. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. So he hits that goal against Cruz Azul, and you and I kind of got on, and we're like, you know, we think he's very good. We know he can shoot. But, guys, when somebody hits, like, their first introduction is a wonder goal, just be careful. Pump the brakes a little bit. And I think Mahala, though, has continued just a trajectory where he's starting to piece it all together. And, and we'll talk more about it with him. But that Seattle game, I felt like just all the pieces kind of clicked. He really all felt it together. And, and, and on top of it, still had a wonder goal. So he can still do those things that are incredible goals. But I think that was his most complete game. I want to shout out to Francisco X Rivera, who remember we had him on the podcast and right before the game for the CONCACAF Champions League, he said, who, we said, who do you think will step up? He said, Mahala. It was a long time right. ago, remember? Wow. So Francisco wow. Knows, his, knows his stuff. Yo, man, I should have got to him like two weeks ago. There's a billion dollar lottery. <laughs> <laughs> did somebody win that? Somebody did win that. One person? One person. Like California by chance? No. I don't think they were in California. Well, there it is. Why, are you trying to reach out? <laughs> <laughs> you trying to make a contact? Not at all. I'm just curious about these things. It's like the zoning Well, you know what? Situation. I am. Hit me up, billion-dollar winner. <laughs> we will talk about a great many things. Let's start with after we've talked about Mahala, our three takeaways from the Seattle game, which feels a long time ago because it was on a Friday. It does. Uh, different guys stepping up, and with the arrival of Gareth Bale and Giorgio Chiellini, it, that's everything focused on these two players, mm -hmm. and for good reason. They're yeah, Gareth Giorgio Bale. Or Giorgio Achilles. Let's just get out of the way. Giorgio was incredible. Giorgio, that. MLS team of the, week. Team of the he week. He really was. You you don't see very many defensive performances like that, and I want to see more because I think we started to learn what center backs do and how they can contribute to the game in all aspects of the game. So I think Giorgio's 60-ish minutes against Seattle is like the template for what you would want to see more of. Maybe that's maybe that is the blueprint moving forward about how these players are the roles that they play on these games, but I would imagine Giorgio Cullini certainly would look to move towards a 90-minute player. Everyone, talking about those guys, but we remember this LAFC, you can rattle off the names of guys that have stepped up. We know about the 13 subs that have come in and Already scored a, a goal, a record. We've ha talked about the 14, 15 players that have scored yep. for LAFC. And Mahala now has five goals. 
when they roll, I know, when you roll it out, he had zero goals in MLS the previous two years. He did have the CCL goal, but no goals in his first two seasons. So that is just blown up. Mm -hmm. But it could be anybody. And I think that's what makes this team exciting. That's what makes this team dangerous. And that's what makes this team very difficult to line up against because with all of that talk, and you know you have Bale, and you know you have Vela, and you know you have Chicho Arango, who's been on fire. Mm -hmm. Mahala Opoku steps in to score, to have the moment of the game. Right, it's cool because it's everything, right? It's the style of play that puts these guys in the right positions to succeed. It's the coaching staff that coaches them up on finishing and how they do the little nuances, the little things, whether it's taking half step back and creating a little more space or taking it on your inside foot. It's the performance staff that keeps all these guys fit so that when they do come off the bench, they're ready to go. And you're right, it's... We have the, the high, high-end talent, the top names, the Gareth Bales, the Carlos Velas, the Giorgio Chiellinis, but you're still getting that little extra oomph from guys that are playing, up, in a ways, above their heads. And that's really what MLS kind of has come to be all about, right? Like, it, it's odd that it happened against Seattle because Seattle kind of perfected that. They hit on all their DPs, but then they also had guys that at like TAM levels and non-TAM levels almost playing at a DP level, and you really need that full contribution. That's a great description of LAFC. And I think people have this misperception about, oh, yeah, they have all the resources, and they do this, and they'll get these players to fit the bill. But you look at how they've developed young players, they've knocked it out of the park. We've talked about Chiqui Palacios. we talked about Jose Cifuentes. That's another one that is... Uh, become a legit superstar here or anywhere. Mm -hmm. That is uh, an incredible development. But that was a coaching staff, a club, taking care of these guys, not rushing them, right, and getting them to commit. Because, look, Mahala is still a work in progress, but you're seeing those things that he's adding to his game and the confidence, which I, I would imagine is one of the more difficult things to wrangle for young players. Right. Consistency is the other one, so we'll see how he bends up there. But uh, that confidence to take that shot in that moment when LFC were – really needing it. Remember, they had the goal disallowed. It was just, you know, that's a, a confident player, a huge moment. Yeah, well, we talk about the game slowing down for the best players. And when you're a younger player, you want to do everything fast, so fast, because the game is fast. And Mahala is known for a little bit of speed, his dribbling ability to get by guys, but it, it seemed like it slowed down a little bit for him, where he's actually seeing the windows and he's seeing the ball going forward, because I thought it was one of his best passing performances. And that was my biggest knock on him. Uh, earlier on in the season, I was like, he's still not figuring out his final product. He can put his head down, as you like to say, pin the ears back, uh, and yes, get, I do like to and say get that. beyond some guys. And he has that natural talent, which you can't really teach that. Guys that can just get by defenders um, are, are worth their weight in gold because you can't teach that. But there's extra parts of your game, little nuances that you can put together. And I think Mahal is starting to slow down in those moments and then see, okay, hey, this is the time to shoot. No, this is the time to slide a little bit of a pass. Maybe it's the time to just lay it off, and then I run beyond, and we do one-twos. There's, there's little ways to, to change up your game. So I like that he's adding that, and that's why we say, I think that's why when we look at it, we're like, that, that was easily his best game. And remember, he's played the whole season. He's played in games. He started important games. It's going to be hard to get him out of that starting lineup because he really is the kind of player you need mm -hmm. if you're LAFC. And even with Brian Rodriguez healthy and Gareth Bale on the bench and you have Chicho and Carlos Vela, Mahala, you almost want to put it that level of importance because of the tools that he brings to the game. So... It's a, it's, a, it's a great problem to have if you're Steve Chirundolo, but uh, everyone's putting their hands up on that front line, which is great, exciting news for everyone here uh, that supports the club. First 45 minutes, and we talked about it in our 110 Football. Check out 110 Football on YouTube. Great content coming out here all the time, including pre and post from our games there at Bank of California Stadium. But we talked about it, and I said this, was, this felt like the best half of football, and I know you spoke to Steve Chirundolo and In Touch, and he, he narrowed it down to a shorter time, 30 minutes, and he's at the 15 minutes, but we even talked off air. So. I didn't think, I mean, I guess, look, he has to say that because when you get scored on uh, in the own goal, you can't really say that was a good spell of play for us. But I thought they came out on fire in the first half. Um, I mean, within the first five minutes, they were able to move the ball from Sifu to Carlos Vela in a very dangerous spot. He took a little bit of a bad first touch, but then recovered enough to get a shot off. And then they just kept pressuring him, and then you just had one little stumble where you give up their own goal, but then they were just right back at it. Which was an own goal, which meant they had no shots on target. I, was, I just felt the pace. It came off the field, and you're like, this was exhilarating. And you could see how precise and limiting mistakes, limiting turnovers that they played. I thought it was – I was worried, could I say that? Because you start cataloging all the games. Mm -hmm. But I did it a little bit later, and I said that was the best half I've seen LAFC play all season. Obviously, the second half, not up to, to snuff, but people are getting a little worried. But don't get worried about it. You know, that's what you do when you react. This is, we've right. been wanting to see this team react in the first half, and they did it. 
and they get a victory against one of the toughest teams to play in the league. I know they had an injury issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you bury the Sounders. They're 19 points behind you in the Western right. Conference standings. That's how important that first half was. Well, and it just reinforced the thing that we've kind of been talking about. It's like, how do you beat LAFC? Re- really, because now they have 15 points from lo- what they call losing situations, which is second in the league. Obviously, we've, we have talked extensively about when LAFC scores the first goal. They dropped zero <laughs> they points. didn't score the first goal. And it's funny because somebody, uh, you know, this, this Austin game coming up, and there's games in between, but this Austin game is setting up to be kind of a, a centerpiece, at least for the Western Conference, probably for the whole Supporter Shield. And uh, an Austin fan had commented, well, we got to score first because they don't play, play well from behind. And I wrote back to him, and this was before the Seattle game, I go, actually, LAFC's top five in team recovering points from a uh, losing position. Austin, oddly enough, is number one. 16 points, recovering from a losing position. I said, so maybe, actually, you guys should play from behind. Oh, but by the way, when LAFC scores first, they've never dropped a point. So I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's going to be a great game. Damned just, if you do, damned if you let's don't. Just watch it. It's the kind of games that we need more in, in the regular season in MLS. But, yeah, it's as of right now, uh, like you said, we, wanted to, we, we don't want them to go behind. We want them to have hot starts. But it was kind of uh, informative to see them punched in the face and then just let's get right back at it. Gets the two goals back before halftime, and then, yeah, the second half fizzled a little bit. But I think I think the two teams really exerted a lot of energy in that first half. Absolutely. And the subs, you know, as sharp as they've been all season, this wasn't the, the time where that you could see that impact. But it's going to come back because it's been there all season long. So uh, this is a very difficult team to play. Uh, hats off to Austin for getting a win over the weekend, which uh, helped them keep pace with LAFC. Because it certainly makes things entertaining because, as you can see it, I always compare standings like the Tour de France. They're going up Alpe d'Huez and the Pyrenees and the leaders, the, 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 the Peloton falls off the back wheel of Lance Armstrong. I couldn't think of anyone else, but okay, I shouldn't mention that. But you get the idea. But that's what LAFC is doing. But Austin's hanging on that back wheel. And we want this league to be top heavy. We want uh, LAFC to have some, uh, some, some company at the top. And you have some really good clubs there, which is going to push them because maybe they can reach that record again and maybe they can... Uh, uh, every game was obviously going to be very important, and you know, much respect for what Austin's been able to do. Well, we have Austin in our sights because obviously they beat us at home. You got to wrap up your conference first, first and foremost. But that race now, it's it's a four-team race. You can't forget about Philadelphia. They looked incredible against Houston. They play in the East as well, so there's a little bit of different uh, discrepancy, I think, in the levels of the East to the West. And then NYCFC is still there, still right there, one point behind them. It's a four-team race. It is interesting. Like you said, you want it to be top-heavy, but it's, it is interesting. Four teams kind of now have broken off, and I think that's going to be the pack going to the sports. I love it. I love it. And a reminder for you to, to watch more MLS because there's some good games. I, lo- I was watching Philadelphia and some of the young players. Jack McGlynn is taking it to another level. How about that free kick? Yes, and these left-footers in this league. Mahala, put him on the list yeah. as well. Left-footers, which you're supposed to be on the rare side. Major League Soccer. I mean, just this team has so many good left footers. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. So it's a really good time. We'll see if Austin keep pace, and we'll keep an eye on their matchup coming up later this season. Now, the final thing I wanted to bring up for this game here, Vince, was the spectacle, which sounds repetitive because it feels like it's a spectacle. Dallas felt like a spectacle. Galaxy Games certainly did with the arrival of the new players. This one, too, and it was so much visual stimulation. You had the Juventus guys there and sharing the moments, and they were tw- – uh, posting stuff from their social media with LAFC involved. That's a huge win for the club because that's exposure for a club that is known worldwide, which lots of eyeballs on it. The Daft Punk, one of the Daft Punk guys without the helmet on. I still claim, how do we know? How do we know? Impossible. Could have been just a normal middle-aged man. <laughs> but maybe, you know, he's like, you know, I should still keep secretive. Maybe we have this big reunion, which, of course, would be heavily attended. Right. Uh, so you got to, you know, you, the mystery is what makes it's part of the appeal. But you're right. It was packed, like floor to ceiling. Everyone was there in their seats. It was loud. Uh, th- th- that rivalry with Seattle, it's real. It's natural. It's organic. Um, and they really felt it. But, yeah, beyond that, the Juventus players, Daft Punk, just so much going on. And then, obviously, the star-studded players on the field, Giorgio Chiellini, Gareth Bale. Uh, Carlos Vela, I mean, this is week in, week out. I would keep telling people, this is the new normal. It's, that's, and I think that's the, the takeaway is, like, you don't miss these home games because something incredible is going to happen, and LAFC is playing so well, and they're getting more and more attention locally, nationally, internationally. It's coming from all levels. We talked to the folks who do the social media, Rosen and the guys, and the numbers have just been hiking up about LAFC because it's, uh, it's an interesting – it has been an interesting watch – 
and it's getting even more interesting. And that, that data is important because, you know, MLS is just trying to get a bigger foothold, more exposure. All of that helps, right. and it happened quickly. Well, and this is just one team. I think there's a few more teams really pushing the needle. And I think, you know, what is it? The tide raises all boats. I mean, I don't know if it's totally true, but LAFC is going to push where they're going to go anyways. And they're saying, we're going to try to be a global brand. You can either follow us or not. I think a lot of teams are starting to see it, and I think a lot of fan bases are seeing it, and they're either with it or they're complaining about it. But one way or another, this is the new normal. So you're going to either have to get with it or get left behind. Not a lot of home games remaining. Now, there are, but there's more road games. So you'll have to to balance that as you move forward. Hey, travel. I know I know that uh, Austin is going to be well attended from our supporters group. So Yeah, we mentioned Portland. There's some good ones coming up. Salt Lake, short trip. Mm -hmm. Got you at Delta Flight. You get there, lickety split. That's coming up, but you better get on it because it's coming up this weekend. So uh, it was like 22,111 for the LAC game. It was like 22,000 yeah. for the Angel City game. And, and then, then 93,000 93. at the Rose Bowl for Juventus what's, Real Madrid. When you heard 93,000 at the Rose Bowl, what's the first thing you thought of? <sighs> it's going to be a... Horrible to get out of there. Yes! <laughs> I'm old. That's exactly what I thought it was going to take three hours to get out of yeah. here. That's how you know that you're old. Yeah, I know. But it's like the, the, I love those commercials. I think they're car, a car insurance commercial where everyone's going in and, and they're like, okay, so we all want to leave in the third quarter. He's like, let's not talk about leaving before we even get into the, <laughs> so into the football game. But that's what makes 93,000 there all the more impressive because people went out there and it wasn't just to see a game. That is eight, nine hours of their day dedicated to the sport which is very exciting i'm generally kind of down on those games like i thought for a while it kind of got too saturated but i will say this year's like batch of international friendlies it's been some good football i'll have to contest that like i'll have to i'll have to leave that and say that that's true i mean it's it felt like that like juventus barcelona game was played at a high high rate i thought the juventus real madrid game maybe fizzled a little bit but so some of those other games have been really good and it's a great way because the European season, Premier League, Bundesliga starts this weekend, La Liga. It's crazy. And uh, you already had the Charity Shield. Everything's going to start up. Oh, Your man. favorite competition, the Charity Shield. Isn't it the Community Shield now? The community Shield. Yes. Yeah. I know you have. Uh, Darwin I know much, Nunez. I know how much you love those. But look, as he's. Darwin Nunez was very good. I thought Erling Holland was. Everyone's crapping on Erling Holland. He was good. But that's what's amazing about these friendlies. Already people are saying, oh, he's, he, he's a bust. Hey, your guy Here. scored. Julian Alvarez. Julian Alvarez. Keep an eye on him. Bungled They're, it in, but hey, yeah. they all count the same. And they couldn't even celebrate because uh, right after. <laughs> Poor guy. I mean, well, no, two things. Couldn't even celebrate because they called offside and it wasn't. So he's oh, sitting there. Like, and messy. then Pep grabs him. And, it, and he's like, he's like trying not to smile. But Pep's like, do this and this and this and this. And he's like, can you just let me celebrate? And Pep's like, no, 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 no. We're going to win this game. <laughs> it's too good. I know you thought. By the way, I, I, I gnawed my teeth. Uh, this was my first break was calling the Champions World Series in 2005 or something. And it was what all the now? tourists. You it covered was your mouth. 2005. You wow. Uh, and it was all these clubs coming for the first time. And now it's this just huge event. And the clubs love it. I remember Jose Mourinho. We'd cover him. And he says, I love coming to UCLA. I love it here. And I'm like, that's all right. What's, but what's, what's funny is loved it. my dunk on you for that would be I turned 21 in 2005. But that also still makes me old. Yeah. So we're old. we got problems. Now, the reason I bring up all those games is because, of course, Wednesday. League's Cup Showcase. This is going to be a much bigger event moving forward uh, where every MLS and Liga MX team will be involved. So it's a small rollout. And then you'll have the first game with the Galaxy and Chivas. You will have the second game with America and LAFC. People are going. Last I heard of 65, 70,000 seats sold. Wow. SoFi Stadium is a World Cup venue. So many it's people, a curtain raiser. It's a curtain raiser. You're going to get a huge look at it. The turf has been laid down because obviously it's going to have to have natural grass for the World Cup. So another moment where LAC is involved where a lot of eyes are on it because everyone wants to see what SoFi looks like in this capacity. And uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to be blown away. But this is part of the LA run through that's going to happen here. And LAFC... First of all, with all these friendlies, yes, they've been well played. But Club America, <laughs> I mean, they have really burdened their team. They've got one win in eight, and they've had friendlies against Chelsea and Barcelona, everyone. They played everybody. So they're playing LAFC now, which is going to be very tricky for this team that's now really going to have to fight hard to make their domestic playoffs. But it's, it's going to be hard to downplay this because of the stadium, because of the four teams that are in that building, yeah. and the World Cup looming ahead. Uh, a lot of people, rightfully so, you guys are all focused on LAFC and saying, don't play anyone. Actually, Bredos, Vince, could you bring your boots to the game? We're going to get you in there, get the kids in there. And I understand that sentiment. But to Max's point, 
Club America is dealing with the same type of thing. They're in their season. They're dealing with having only one, what did you say, one in seven? One in eight. One in eight. And that includes the friendly. So yeah. those don't count, but they haven't really done well. They lost this fire. weekend again against Leon. So. Yeah, so they've got some things to worry about, too. I think Steve will treat this as a uh, basically a, a glorified training session. So we'll see guys get 30, 40 minutes. Bella. Bella, Bella. Yeah, the, They're all the on the roster. Guys. So um, There's no kind of – I don't think there's a substitute for a game type atmosphere especially something like this so i think in a lot of ways it can help lafc and i understand you worry about injuries but injuries can really happen anywhere uh so i'm excited to see how steve manages that and i think he will do it the right way but i'm also excited because we've gotten the list of names that are going to be available and you see guys like tony leone nathan ordaz uh eric duanias who we kind of forget about because he had healthy. injured, he had injured his healthy. knee at the same time as Eddie Segura. He was out there in full training today. I will add, uh, after the match, I know a lot of people were worried because they weren't sure, was it a hamstring injury? Was it just a cramp? Carlos Vela's been out here in full training, so it seems like he's going to be okay. But uh, to see guys like Nathan Ordez, Tony Leone play against those uh, uh, Club America team, whether it is kind of their younger guys or they're the full-time guys it's it's a cool moment it's a cool moment it's not to, it's not to be diminished at all so enjoy it i know a lot of the folks listening in will be t checking that out first chance to see you know actual football i mean i've been to football nfl games there i'm very interested to see what the atmosphere inside sofi for this kind of we don't know the role of that stadium at the world cup i strongly believe that the final will be there uh, that's an argument for another day but i've said that for the longest time i said that people said it's going to be the rose bowl that's going to get the the L.A. privileges for the World Cup turned out to be so far. It's just too big of a venue. Uh, so much has been invested. People want to see it that it wouldn't be. By the way, the World Cup venues, I, I, Las Vegas really should have tried harder because I think they dropped the ball by not having that stadium as part of the list. But water under the bridge. SoFi's in there. We're going to get to see that here as well. Yeah. Got some. I know. That's not for you. That's uh, some heavy duty. Uh... We're, just, we're just trying to do a show here. It's like. <sighs> by the way, I finally saw. Uh, Top Gun Maverick. Uh -huh. Solid. Solid. Enjoyed it. You would. Quick look at Real Salt Lake. This is before we, we get ready and bring in Mahala. Quick look at Salt Lake. It's on the weekend. Tough place to play. Salt Lake in those playoff positions. Altitude. Uh, again, for the new players, I, I know when we talked about Gareth Bale, I said, when does he start? I still don't think he starts this game. Maybe he gets in for the next one. And maybe he doesn't get that game because of how well the front three have looked. Right. And... A big test against a Western team that you don't need us to remind you about the pain that they've inflicted on you in year one. That that wound still remains. And you have to give some credit to RSL for their, their position in the table, having gone through a lot of stuff. They lose Rusnak, obviously, to Seattle. That's a big player for them. Crylock has spent a lot of the season out. They basically were playing with zero DPs for the first half of the season. Then they have the David Ochoa kind of saga where they're going through that. that and weird. yet they've still maintained in a playoff spot. Um, they've... They are still very difficult to play against at home. So I don't think you could take them lightly. Lightly, And then they have now added some high-end talent. They brought Savarino back, who's a guy that you always got to look out for. I think he's almost scored almost every game he's been back. Yeah, and he's been great since. Pablo Ruiz is a, an underrated character there in the midfield and really holds things down. So I would not look past them, uh, especially with all, as, as we said, it's a busy week. There's a lot going on, but end of the day, that match on Saturday is the most important over everything else going on. And I would say Justin Glad, because I've watched some Real Salt Lake games, it's been really one of the better defenders in the league, so this is going to be a tough team. And as we have seen, and we've talked about the spectacle that is LAFC at home, the traveling road show yep. is a big deal now. Nashville got to do it. That place was buzzing. Sporting Kansas City and now Real Salt Lake, who draw well. They are, one of, to me, one of the real good success stories in Major League Soccer and a fine rival for LAFC. So I think we've uh, covered the bases I think there. We've covered all the bases it's in a impossible. very busy week. It is impossible. We know we've probably missed something. Hit us up on Twitter. I'll give you my opinion just on Twitter. I don't know. Including exactly where we are. Oh, uh, no. We want to get it right. No, you guys tell us. We don't know. We are not zoning experts. You tell us. We will take your cues yeah. on this. I always wanted to be a surveyor. That would have been yeah. fun. You know, seeing the words. Are they hard hat? Yeah. No. Bet you was good money vest. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you're just on your own. No one's <laughs> left alone. No one's telling you what to do. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe down the road. But I'm oh, having too much road. fun. I'm having too much fun doing this. Inside LAFC MVP podcast, rate, review, download, subscribe, and tell a friend. We'll be back with the man of the hour, Mahala Apoku. Welcome back. Inside LAFC MVP podcast, we are now joined by Quadwo Mahala Apoku, who, who by the way, look, Sebastian Ibiaga is already. Things are happening on the other side of the camera. They always do it on the other side of the camera, so we can't like verify for sure, but Sebastian Ibiaga is Sebastian right Sebastian Ibiaga, Giorgio Chiellini screamed your name out. Paul is giving you a, team security Paul is giving you a death stare. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of love, right? Yeah, it's a little. Of love. <laughs> <laughs> call it love. <laughs> <laughs> call it something else. 
<laughs> Seb said it. Some people call it love. <clears throat> what do you call it? <laughs> yeah, and they can't hear you on the thing either. <laughs> uh, they're giving you media training. You want to do media, right? Yeah. So we have to train you. So we have yeah. to. You, you're going to raise your voice. All right. Your body language. You're going to be like. Da, 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 da. You know. <laughs> That's exactly how Max does it too. He goes. Da, 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 da. Well, I'm learning from you, so you know. Good. Well, yeah. you're on your way. You're on your way. <laughs> Everyone loves you. You're you're up in a good spot. By the way, this is the third year with you. You could laugh at this, Seb, if it's it's the fact. Uh, you've been hitting the weight room, man. Yeah. Filling that body out. Yeah. No. Come on, man. <laughs> This is a solid citizen. Oh, no. Oh, oh yeah. no. This The podcast is going off the rails, Mahal. Look at all these people that are coming out here now. now oh, no. Now Mamadou's here. It's uh, it's quite... Oh, boy. It's getting intense. It's getting intense. Yeah. Okay, but this is the problem. You've got you to battle through that. They're trying to throw you off. you got to yeah. just rip through that I need stop to, sign. I need to stay focused and fight through it, you know. Fight through. Okay. Right. This is more pressure than being on the field because you know what you're doing out there. This is where you're learning, right? Yeah. <laughs> They're really getting a rise. Hey, uh, you're the, it's, it's the goal from long range. Where did that come from? A left foot when they needed it? You saw something across the way and whammo. Yeah, it, it's something that we've been practicing from training. Uh, Mr. Ante, after training, we do a lot of shooting and stuff. So it's helping me to, to get the target well. So. But they saw that from you. They saw that you, you could do this. Yeah. So they said, when you see a chance... Yeah. Go for it. And that was he, the opportunity. Yeah, he always tell me, like, I have the power, so I should not be afraid. Just hit it. Where do you think your shot ranks like, amongst all the other players for power? Shot power. <laughs> yeah, what's your FIFA rating? <laughs> FIFA rating. Because that was pretty strong, what we saw. Well, I, for me, I don't know. Yeah. Nah, I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Maybe 60, 70. Oh, it's you're not so, bad. That's very <laughs> modest. <laughs> I would say you're at least getting into the low 80s, <laughs> at least for, for raw power, right? Yeah. Well, for you, like Max was saying, and you're saying you're, you're training the shot, but it's also the recognition of when the moments to take that shot. Yeah. And I was saying on the post game, I was like, when are defenders going to realize don't back up on Mahala? Because that's what, is that what you saw? I, the Seattle guy kind of gave you a little bit of room. Yeah, so I got, you know, I, I just got a space and I was like, oh man, thank you. <laughs> so just hit it to the pole. Mm -hmm. Just give the net pass, you know, so. Give the net a pass. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. It's for you. <laughs> but for the, for, we were talking about the goal, obviously, because it's fun, and you seem to only hit worldies. Like, there's no, your highlight, re your goal reel is all nice goals, which is, which is fun for you. But I think that that game, and I was even telling, we were talking with Steve Trondolo, because I, I do his show just before we do this one, I said, I thought Mahala had one of his most complete games, and he agreed. So what, what aspects were you kind of adding to your game? Because tactically, I thought, you were an outlet. Your positioning, um, in terms of finding the ball and getting, you know, at your defender was very good. How did how did you see that game all coming together for you? Well, it's it's all about learning every day, every game, you know. And uh, Mr. Ante and the coaches have been like showing me a lot of videos, like how I can improve my position and stuff. So it's kind of all come together, you know. So every day you improve a little bit, so you're getting better. So. It's really great, you know. <laughs> Mr. Ante, Ante Razov. So he's yeah. the guy who's really yeah. making sure. And he was a great uh, goal scorer in his MLS He days. had a decent left foot himself, too. He was, yeah, yeah. He's, always, he's always pressuring me. He knows that. He said I can do better, so he's always giving me, like, the encouragement that I need as a, as a young player, as an upcoming soccer player. So, What are those areas that, you, that you've spoken to the coaching staff that you really want to know, that you want to improve the most? Um, how, like... I get the ball, I get a space for myself, because when I have a space for myself, I can hit the ball straight to the net. How you create the space for yourself. Yeah, yeah. So from your touch to your yeah. next move. Yeah, to the, my next move. Mm -hmm. so. And he been showing me a lot of clicks, you know, like videos and some players I, I can watch too. Who, who know, are those? Um, who are some of those? What is this guy's name? Uh, he's a Nigerian. Uh, uh, Where does he play? He was Current playing. player? Nah. Oh. Just, uh, okay. JJ Akocha? No, no. <laughs> oh, no. He would be a good player to he watch. Play, he played in MLS too, like. Uh, oh, uh, Ob Obafemi Martins. Ob Obafemi, Obafemi, yeah. <laughs> I see yeah, it a little so. bit. So it's like, because watching you in that Seattle game, it was that, that move where you can go deep or you can come short. And it seemed like the defender didn't know when you were going deep or when you were coming short. He doesn't know where you are, basically. Yeah, so it was good. like, And uh, 
thanks to him, he gave me a chance to <laughs> to get a space for myself to shoot again and get a goal. So it's really good, you know. And that helps to see other guys yeah. and how they do it. And you can, okay, I, I got some video here. I could base what I want to do off of him and see his yeah. movement, see what yeah. he does with his touch. So Bob Femi, that guy is an um, amazing player. Like, he's really good. Like, the speed, the strength he has. So, yeah, it's good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so you, you when you came here, and I think a lot of people, obviously, the Crucisul goal skyrocketed. <laughs> like, sky's the limit. But we, we saw you, obviously, in, in some preseason games, and, and you were a player with with uh, the ability to dribble past guys. Like, you're, just, you're shifty. You can do that. You, you get on the ball. It's very hard to dislodge you from it. But has the game slowed down a little bit for you? Because I feel like, not, not you, but the, the pictures you're seeing, because I feel like now you're seeing more of the openings for passes um, and your playmaking ability, I think has started to tick up a level. Yeah, um, like I said, like every game you learn f something new from it and I'm improving um, from my playmaking ability. So that one will help me in set, set, um, some places. So it's not the time you dribble and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. so you need to make a passes, help with the team. The team come first, you know, so yeah. <laughs> I was talking to David Cameraman, and he was telling me a story about how you got to L.A., and Bob Bradley went out, and he saw you. Uh, can you tell us a bit about that? <laughs> but, yeah, but that must have been incredible, because yeah. how could you have thought that you'd have gone from there to here? Yeah, uh, it was so amazing that um, Bob Bob come to, came to Ghana, my former club, um, Trump Divisa Soccer Academy, and uh, we play a game. And he said, like... He didn't know about you before. Nah. Okay. <laughs> so one of uh, my agents... He brought, uh, I think he's a friend of Bob, yeah, Pete Divisa. So he invited him, you know, like, come and see my academy, you know, and some stuff, you know. Come and see my academy, not Mahala. He yeah, said, come see yeah. academy, and he saw yeah. you. So he, he said, like, oh, I want to invite you over to LFC, you know, like, for trials, you know. And, well, that's how it happened, you know. That, so. That's incredible. <laughs> it's amazing, like. Yeah. And, 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 and a, a testament to the great eye that Bob Bradley has. And you got to play under Bob. And how are things been different with uh, Coach, Coach Steve, Mr. Steve? Mr. Steve. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, things been good. Things been great. You know, like, so, like, I'm learning um, different stuff. You know, like, uh, you know, every, every coach has their own tactics and their own, like, how they want their players to be. So as a young player, I'm learning from it, and it's going to help me what I learned from Bob and Steve. If I combine it, I think it's going to be great for me. <laughs> well, Mahal, your your whole story is like a made ready really for is. a movie, honestly, because uh, uh, we just talked about Bob seeing you and then telling you to come out for trial. And then if we remember correctly, you were out here, the pandemic hits. You actually couldn't get home. <laughs> Why is that funny? You that, no, no, you know, like, that, that one that was, uh, uh, it was so hard. Like, right. I was in the hotel like eight months. What, you're 18? Yeah. 18. 18. <laughs> Didn't have a contract. I don't have contract. But as John Thornton says, you kept coming to training. Yeah. Your, your attitude was infectious. The guys loved you. And then obviously your skill was of a level. So yeah. they finally signed you. But then to add even more, then you have a, your injury was pretty gnarly last year. Oh, God. <laughs> and then to step up now again, like, you, you, all along the way is you've had things thrown in your path, and you just take that next jump, take that next jump. How has it been um, playing this season after that injury? Do you, you feel you're, you're back to the 100%? Do you feel like you still have more to go coming off of it? Where do you feel you're at? Now I feel I'm back, you know. And um, it, the injury has helped me, like, to grow as a person, to be a strong person, like to focus, to be like determined, because like it was hard to get injured, like be out like nine months, you know. So what I learned from all this, all this months is like stay focused, um, be commitment and um, determined, like chase your dream. Like I wanna, I wanna be a professional soccer player. I wanna do this. So like I don't wanna give up. So and I have a. A family that has been looking up to me, like have brothers, a mother that I'm trying to, my possible best to take care of, you mm -hmm. know. So I got a lot of things that I want to do in life for my family. So I have to work harder and achieve that goal. So my family are the one that pushing me 
to do better, to keep going, because mm -hmm. I want to give my mother a better life. So is that where it comes from? That that ability to be positive. Yeah. In, in the worst moments, it's yeah. you think of on your family back yeah, home. Yeah, I think about my mom all the time. You know. Yeah. So it pushed me to to be better mm -hmm. and to to keep going. You know. Do you get to talk before games? You, you yeah. Phone call? My yeah. mom, we talk a lot. Like, let's say a week, we could talk. We talk like three, four times a week. Yeah. And I remember one time, like the whole week, I have not talked to my mom, and she called me. She was mad. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can all relate to that feeling. So I was like, "Oh, mom, I'm sorry. It's just uh, you know, soccer and stuff." Well, at least two minutes. Uh, no, That's all it takes. <laughs> Listen to Mahal. Call your mom. Two minutes. <laughs> it only takes two minutes, and you'll make her happy. Everyone will be happy about that. Yeah. Do they get to see many of your games, or are you just saying, are you able to send them clips so they can uh, see your goals? My big bro is the one like showing my mom my videos and every stuff. You know, it's just that the time difference is hard right. for her to watch it. You know, but my big brother is always the one who been watching the games and stuff. Yeah. How many hours? What's the? Was it like nine hours? Now eight, it's hours? eight hours or seven hours different. Okay. So if it's like twelve p.m. here, it's like seven or eight a.m. back mm -hmm. home. So yeah. uh, is was the last time you got to see your your family? Have you seen them recently? Um, last year, December. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you did have a chance to get home. Yeah. After being stuck here. Yeah. But being stuck here might have been the best thing that ever happened to you, yes, right? Yes, yes. Isn't that yes. weird? <laughs> but it had to be hard, and I can see why you get discouraged, as you said, not having a contract and having to battle this. And, again, you call some mom and staying positive, laughing. And yeah. I, I got to say, we've done this podcast a year from here, and we've never had seven or eight people come out <laughs> to watch you know, it. like, I'm so blessed to, to have such a wonderful people around me. You know, like, this team is family. It was um, brotherhood, and, like the way Seb and everybody been taking care of me. Even Mr. Paul and Mr. J, oh, they've been incredible to me. Like Mr. Paul is like uh, we don't want to talk too to much because then he gets to his head. <laughs> yeah, and then he, yeah. Do you have <laughs> Do you have the Paul T-shirt? Nah. You don't. No, I don't believe that. I don't. <laughs> I don't. You wouldn't wear it anyways. I will. Oh, you I would love to. Oh. Have you can asked get, him? Can we get Mahal uh, a, a Paul T-shirt? We'll see. What we do is we just look at the camera and ask for things, and sometimes it eventually shows okay. up. Okay, Mr. Paul, please. I need one of your T-shirt. I'm begging you. Huh? I'm not your paying son. for it. I'm not it paying for it. it. You buying it for me? I see your son, please. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about we were talking about how it's a family and this team and everyone steps up for each other and. When Gareth Bale arrives, and you knew about Gareth Bale, obviously. Yeah. Oh, I've been watching you when I was a kid. Oh, God. <laughs> and now you're, well, you're you starting in front of him. <laughs> you scored a goal, and then he, at, at the end of the game, he's, he's, he's bowing this. to you. <laughs> what, are your, what are you thinking well, yeah, in that moment? I, yeah, what is your answer to that? That's insane. I was like, man, am I dreaming or what? Like, it's, it's incredible. Like, um, someone you look up to and you are playing with, alongside with him, it's it's amazing. Like, I call myself the luckiest boy alive. You know, like I'm so blessed. You know, to have such a wonderful place around me. Like, have Carlos. I have Bear. I have Cellini. I have Chicho. I, like, I have everybody. Yeah, you might as well just name the whole roster. Yeah, like everyone. So I'm so blessed to to be part of this family. You know. And you love being here with this club in this city. I love being here with this club in the city. It's nice weather. You know? The city loves you, and this well, club lo you keep scoring goals like that. <laughs> Max, speaking of, Mahal has been on this podcast once before this yes. season. You were away. Uh, Jordan Harvey started the podcast, but then I had to go, so it was just me and Mahal chatting. It was just us hanging out, and I learned the man likes bowling. Uh, oh. you still, you've been doing some bowling still? How, yeah, how's man. the score going? It's going away. Now I'm like 100 and something. And the last one was... 120 or something. Okay. Yeah. He's putting it all together. Oh, you'll get the 200. I'm getting there. It's you ball left-handed or right-handed? Right. right. See, see, isn't that weird? <laughs> Jordan Harvey is left-footed but right-handed too. It's just that. Oh, okay. This is, is, is different. Back home, you can't use your left hand. Like maybe you're eating using your left hand. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, so you get it. Can, a, I, you can get I blow it. your mind right now? I'm right-handed, left-footed. So let's make Max is, a bond. Max, Max is, yeah. Max is, Me, you, and Jordan. Max is zero-footed. I thought it was <laughs> that, that, that much is true. Uh, but I used to be right-handed, and I wanted to use my left foot. And lo and behold, I got my left foot primary, and then I forgot how to use this. Oh, really? Yeah. Is there a secret to being 
able to use both? You sh how's your right foot? I've seen you use it. It's pretty good. Well, I was... It's getting better. I'm the, you know, <laughs> I like I'm that being, you look down. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to been, offend your right foot. I've been practicing a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, just to get it better, get it in shape, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just a reminder, we're asking Team Security Paul to get Mahala a shirt. Uh, <laughs> yeah. One of his shirts that are up there. And we'll, we'll go on for it. He disappears when we start asking yeah. for free stuff. Yeah. This, is, this is crazy. This is so much in such a short amount of time. You know, it takes a long time before he invites me to his house. I know. Yeah. For dinner? Yeah, man. <laughs> did you get keys yet, or is it just under the mat? Where, how do you get in? Now, I call his wife. That one, I'm secure, you know? Okay. Yeah. She's the one that yeah. protects you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> I, I, when you hear that it's a family, you go, yeah, it's great. But it, it, hearing to you, and I've heard people say it, but hearing to you, it's never felt more like a family here. It's, it's and it's family. very important. That's important for you. That's important for me because... I don't have my my mom and my brother anyone here. So and I now I have family here. Like I have family, even the club, and um, uh, a friend that I met here. My first friend I met here, um, Gelson, and his family is uh, amazing. Like they welcome me. Uh, and you, you you still see him all the time yeah go there like mother's day and um thanksgiving and go there have good time in the family you know it's <laughs> <That's> incredible because <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. i take myself when i was your age and how intimidating this is all and those connections that you make make all the difference yeah so. oh i'd ask you uh the gold celebration wakanda wakanda is that your black Panther number one yeah. superhero yeah what was uh steve's i don't want to give it away but did he What's have one? He didn't pick like a number one, but he said he 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 thinks of himself more as like an Ant Man. An Ant Man. He's he's small. Because <laughs> <laughs> the second movie coming out, so it's yeah. good timing. Yeah. But you have oh, damn! I got a good timing too. <laughs> well, you, you were the inspiration for this week's In Touch with Steve Trondolo because you did the celebration. So we talked about superheroes. Oh, so really? There you go. So thank, thank you. You did my job for All me. Right. You gave me the theme for this week. Oh, you're welcome, man. <laughs> Do you like other superhero movies? Yeah, I like um. Um, Superman, yeah, and Spider-Man, and um, Flash. Flash, okay. <laughs> Flash fits into your game, too. Uh, and Thor. And Thor, okay. Yeah. Have you yeah. seen the new Thor? Nah. I, I, want to, I want to go watch it at the cinema, because there's cinema close by me, so if I, w I see, like, a nice movie, I'll be like, okay, let me go watch it. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. By you myself, should... just chilling. <laughs> I was going to say, me and Max, me, you and Max, we should all go see Thor. That would be good, man. Yeah, that'd be yeah. fun. I'm down for it, man. <laughs> pull the seats back and order food. Yeah. yeah. Just, just chill. Just and have a we'll come back and do a movie review on the podcast. That's what we'll do. <laughs> Mahala, you're, you're such an infectious uh, human being, and it's, it's wonderful to spend some time with you, and it's been great to see that development. And when we said to see that with all this star power, and Mahala always seems to be in that lineup, is a, is a great testament for the work that you've done. So we look forward to seeing you continue to do that Thank for the rest you. of the season. Thank you. Sure, um, it's my dream to to do to get better every day, to to do better and to help the team we achieve our goal. You know, so LFC. I don't know how to describe it. You know, like so much love, the fans, everybody like. So, oh, they love you. <laughs> I love them too. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope this is it. There's these, these goals that are be attained, and everybody stepping up in a family affair. That's LAFC. Mahala, great to see you. Thank By the way, does your mother call you Mahala? I know your dad calls you Mahala. Does she? My call mom, she, she called me Mahala, on, um, but when she called me like Opoku or Kwejo, it means like I did something bad. <laughs> <laughs> we all have that too. We all have that too. <laughs> 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 I know something is coming. Is that what she coming. said when you finally <laughs> called her after that week? She yeah. called you by that name? Yep, there you go. I knew it. That's why I asked. Like, she, when she mentioned the full name, oh, God. <laughs> Got to keep up those. I, I have to have um, a good excuse. <laughs> right. Well, you could tell her you gave her a nice shout out on the podcast. So, Mom, I love you. I'm sorry for not calling you, you know. He's going to call you right now when we're done. He's going to call you right now when we're done here on the podcast, and we'll certainly look forward to having you back. Uh, have fun. Thank you. It's uh, SoFi Stadium, and we'll see you again on the weekend with Real Salt Lake. A reminder to rate, review, download, subscribe, and tell a friend about Inside LAFC MVP Podcast. So long. We'll see you again next week. Oh, yes! They knocked on the door, and they finally kicked it through.